YouTube. We're back again today with the 2002 Toyota Corolla. Customer complaint, loud noise coming from underneath the hood. I've taken a quick preliminary look and suspect that it's probably an alternator. So we're going to get in here and find out. Sixteen pin. Everybody likes seeing this little scan tool. What does that scan tool do? It runs a quick system check on the vehicle, see if there's any other issues. It's a Toyota Corolla. It's a 2002. Why it doesn't pick the year? I don't understand. 2000, it's 2003. Basically, all the models from 2000 to 2008 are the same. Let me see. All three port. Come on, you can do it. Fault report. All righty. Well. well, that's that's definitely noisy. You get down in here with a 19 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. And pull back. On it, release the tension on the belt and then take it off of the alternator. Okay, after having removed the belt, start the engine, make sure your noises are gone so that you know that it's definitely coming from something that's belt driven. Right, now get down in here and start spinning things. And that alternator is not making any noise at all. That's freewheeling nicely. Well, there's our noise. That's the water pump. Alrighty, well, see where it goes from here. Well, the owner of the uh, car is going to go down and get a new water pump for it. And unfortunately, I was. Uh, a little anxious and hit the wrong button on the scan tool and deleted the three codes that were stored in it but he believes that at least one of them is an oxygen sensor so we're gonna start breaking this down and get ready to put a new water pump in it I'm gonna start off by removing the beauty cover Set that aside. Put a little catch bucket down underneath the car to be able to catch the coolant as you drain it. And then down here on the bottom of the radiator, right here is your pet cock. Drain that down into the, the catch bucket. You remove your radiator cap to help it drain a little quicker. And then we're going to go ahead and get ready to get in here and remove these motor mounts. And after letting that drain down, we're going to get in here and disconnect those motor mount bolts. Get down underneath the alternator to those water pump bolts, they're all 10 millimeter. And we'll get that water pump out of there. We're gonna take this motor mount out of the way first just to free ourselves up some extra room. Now in the process of removing this motor mount, you got one 14 millimeter bolt up at the top. You got two 
14 millimeter nuts down on the bottom. You have to pull off the inner fender shield to get up in here. And then you got three bolts. That one there, this one here, and then one down there. And then the motor mount will come out. Pull off the hubcap. I'm going to remove the wheel. And once you've got the car up to a safe height, then underneath it with the jack stand. In this case for soft driveway, we're going to protect the driveway by putting an old rotor down. Putting the jack stand on top of the rotor. And then set it right underneath. Spot in here where we feel really comfortable. It's not going to go anywhere. We'll set it right, right there. And then we can go ahead and lower it back down. to protect the oil pan from being crushed, the jack underneath, the, a board on top of the, the jack. In this case, we're going to go this way here in the front. This way here we can support the motor and disconnect the motor mounts. Get that last one out of there. Wheel off, and as usual, put it underneath the vehicle for extra security. And then, what we're going to do now is we're going to take this piece of plastic out of here so we can get to the two bolts from the bottom of the motor mount. Somewhere underneath the front here, there's another fastener, I'm sure. And I can't see it. Oh, somebody put a spring on it right there. Okay, we'll get that out of the way. I'll get this plastic out of the way. We have access to the bottom side of the engine, and what we're looking for now is right up there. Get up in here and get those two nuts removed. Up in from the bottom. And then come in from the top. Made it to the ground and set the bolts. That's the top bolt. We'll set those aside. And now we're going to go pull out these three. And getting around this air conditioning hose is a little difficult, so we're going to put another extension on. Every extension, you lose a little bit of your torque, but it shouldn't amount to much. And then one more. Right in there. That didn't need to almost knock you over. Then you can go ahead and flip the motor mount up and out forward with it. And then go ahead and lift the motor mount up and out. It's in good shape. We'll set that aside. And now we've got a much more open method of getting in. Down in there to that, uh, that water pump. In order 
to simplify things, we're going to jack the motor up about another inch. Start hearing things squeaking, that's where you want to stop. Now we can get in at all of these bolts nice and easily. We're all done draining down here, so let's get down in here. Hopefully you guys aren't upside down. Let's see, get down in here and tighten up that pet cock. And now we're gonna grab the 10 millimeter wrench and start removing those bolts. And our socket wrench with a three inch extension on it. And then get down in here. One. That's two. And I'm not going to be able to get between the frame. There's three loosened up. There's four loosened up. And then somewhere over here on the other side, way down below, we got another one. We have to put the shorter extension on there to get in there for that one. Now that we've got all of those bolts cracked loose, we can get in here around the camera and start spinning these bolts out. I'll spin these out by hand. And take special note if any of them appear to be longer than any of the others. Or if there's any washers on the bottom of them or anything like that, like this right here, it doesn't come off. Okay, it's a nice long bolt. And it's an equally long bolt. Next bolt down. Sorry about shaking you guys around so much. And the owner is back with his new water pump. This one we got a short one. Get underneath here and find the other two. Right, I'm going underneath for those. I'm gonna let the motor down just a hair. Another long one, and then we got one more hidden one up in here. Things pouring all over the place. Yeah, I can't help that because I get the last one out. 
kind of tight quarters. fell on the ground. Now let's get down in here with a little pick and remove that o-ring. Go ahead and clean that all up with a little brass brush and we'll put a new one in. Get down in here with a brass brush and just make sure that the uh, hole where the o-ring goes is clean of debris. The brass won't scratch up the aluminum. You use a steel brush, you'll ruin the surface and it'll leak. And take the o-ring, coat it with a little bit of silicone grease so that it'll help seat in place and it'll also help hold it in place. And get in here and just work it down into the groove all the way around. Make sure it's all the way in, nice and gently. Now we can put the new water pump in place. Grab one of the long bolts from the top. See if I can get in here without knocking you guys over. Probably not. Nope. I hit the camera once or twice with, the, with it. Get everything here lined up. Get down in, get the first bolt started. Two short bolts total and four long bolts. And what I like to do is the short bolts last. Because if you stick the short bolt in a long bolt hole, it's a pain in the neck getting it back out. So you do all the long ones first, and if the bolt sticks out a lot farther than the rest of it, you know you got the short hole. Tricky part is is figuring out how to get my fat fingers in there. So that's a short bolt goes in there. Well, it's not a bad day out, that's for sure. Oh, it's a beautiful day. A Do not snug down any of the bolts yet. They're just 10 millimeter bolts and they're going into aluminum, so you don't want to crank them down too tight. And once you've got them all tight, go back around, double check them all. Now we're going to take the motor mount, work the motor mount back down in, bring that over, and set your studs down through the holes, and then go ahead and put your base. The bolts in here. Start them all by hand before you go hitting it with a driver. In this case, this one doesn't want to go in. There we go. You know, if I had hit that with a driver, I probably would have stripped it. 
And then last but not least, you got this one here. And it goes to the ground. Where'd it go? Where did it go? I heard it. But I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Let's try that again. Fat finger syndrome. All right, once you've got those in place, wiggle it around, make sure that everything is seated, and go ahead and spin those down tight. Get in here. And then put the two nuts on from below. Add the extension on so you can get up in there. Start these also by hand. Thread the top bolt down in. Get down underneath, tighten those down. Check them. Back up top, double check it again. Motor mounts in, water pumps in. Let's go ahead and get the belt installed. There we go. Now let's get the belt. Now remember we had an arrow on it. We got an arrow on it to show which direction we want that belt going. We're gonna go down in. Slide that belt all the way down in. Hanging off the alternator for the moment. Now this is where it gets really tricky. Belt routing chart. Where are you? Blast it. Chris.
the brakes. Want something to drink? No, I'm good, thank you. Got lemonade in there. Wow. It's always fun trying to figure out how the belt went on when you don't have a belt chart. Oh yeah, I was thinking about that. Snakes all over the place. There's only one way it goes on, right? Yep, no, we got it. Yeah. Took me long enough, but I got it. I tried it in three different ways, and I got a way too much belt. Now I don't have enough belt. And I double checked that everything usually is. There's a diagram somewhere in the car. On the There's usually one underneath yeah. the hood, but there isn't one in here. I got it all in place. All routed, nothing's hanging out of the grooves. Go ahead and put the uh, inner wheel well back, guard back in. And get the plastic cover up in place. The first screw in. The second screw. Get that started. Line it up by the marks that were on it. He's going very, very, very lightly. Otherwise, they'll strip, and then we'll hook the spring that was rigged in the front back up. Jack the car back up, get the jack stand out. Get the wheel back on. Cross pattern. You know, we got a funnel set up to strain the old coolant. We don't have any more to put in it at the moment. We'll go ahead and put the beauty cover back on. If you want the rotor, it's in the garage. I just can't lift it there.
Now once you got it all filled back up with your antifreeze, go ahead and start it. this in here for you guys uh, if you noticed I accidentally hit the wrong button on the scan tool and wiped out all the codes there were three of them in there my understanding from the owner is that one was for a catalytic converter and I'm not quite sure what the other ones were but as a general practice ever since I acquired the scan tool I like to start off before I do anything with the car running a full health report on it that way there if there are any other issues in the car I, I can make the owner aware of it and maybe even possibly generate some future work but most importantly to make sure that the customer is aware that they may have other problems so if you guys found this one helpful feel free to like comment and subscribe and don't forget you got no more excuses pick up those wrenches